everybody, welcome to the Comic Game Movie Show. My name is Deshaun, and today I am here to answer a question that everyone's been asking since the Thor Love and Thunder trailer, which is, how did Jane get Thor's hammer? More specifically, how did Jane reforge Storm's hammer? Now, there has been a lot, a lot of questions and, and you know, people talking about the Thor Love and Thunder trailer and about particularly Jane Foster. Now, Jane, now, for people who are not initiated, in the comics, Jane Foster does become the Mighty Thor. At a certain point in the comics, and during the Jason Aaron run, I believe, well, this happens during, um, what was it, um, Original Sin. But, you know, the Mighty Thor run with Jason Aaron was awesome, which is what this comic, but which is what the movie's mostly based off of. That's where Gore came from. You know, that's where um, a lot of things came from. There's a lot of inspirations in this film, but the Mighty Thor, Jane Foster, and, you know, Gore the God Butcher all came from this run. At a certain point, Thor didn't think he was worthy, and he became the unworthy Thor. Actually, that's where the short hair came from. I know you guys, if you notice that Chris Hemsworth had his hair short, it's not just, a, it's not just you know, a different hairstyle change. It's actually a call-out to the to the Thor the Unworthy comic, which I haven't read the, un the Unworthy Thor. I've heard it's a really good book because, you know, it's like a more of a a Thor going on a spiritual journey to fear, figure out who he is and whatnot, which is not too dissimilar to what seems like he's going on in this movie. But I digress. And Thor becomes unworthy, and Jane Foster picks up the hammer. She becomes the worthy Thor. And now, this, now the angle in the comics, which is also going to be played up in the movie, which I can't wait to see, is in the comics, Jane Foster gets cancer. They don't. I don't believe they really get into the specifics of how she got the cancer, if she got it from hanging out with Thor, if she just, you know, got it. But she gets cancer. And it's killing her, and you know, she's doing the, and she doesn't really, she, she wants to live uh, on her own terms, if she can, you know, do human things, she doesn't want to, you know, get some elixir and fix it, she wants to live on her own terms, and if she dies, and she dies on her own terms, that's kind of the, 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 um, the way she kind of was handling it, but at a certain point, when Thor becomes unworthy, the hammer, I believe, reaches out to Jane. And Jane wields it and becomes the mighty Thor. Now, when she's wielding this hammer, she has all the power and strength of Thor. Obviously. He who, he who shall be worthy shall possess the power of Thor. And she possesses the power of Thor. Which is why they just call her the mighty Thor. Because technically, because Thor starts becoming calling himself Odin's son. Like, he's just, he's the Odin's son. So, um, and she's the mighty Thor, whatever. And, you know, it goes like that for a while. She's badass. Just, you know, she's just nearly as strong as Thor. If not, at, it's not even, she's, if not as strong as Thor. And, you know, things kind of go like that. And, but in the run, unfortunately, every time she wields the hammer of Thor, the chemo treatment she's been going through to, you know, help out with her cancer goes away. So the moment she powers down from holding the hammer, she immediately goes back to she so the hammer is in a sense slowly killing her every time she uses this hammer it takes a little bit from her so in a way so she's on borrowed time but she wanted to do something and she wanted to be a hero she wanted to help people in her final like because you know you know it's nothing like being on your final days and knowing that you might die soon when you get real bad cancer to make you go i want to do something make a difference and she found a way to make a difference here and they're playing that angle up in the MCU. Now, it's going to be a bit different in the MCU. We have not seen Jane Foster since Thor the Dark World. Technically, we saw her in Endgame, but that was a flashback to Thor the Dark World, so it's still Thor the Dark World. And all we know is that her and Thor broke up. Most likely, she broke up with him. And it's going to be, in, and I do believe their love is going to reconnect. I do believe that. Their love is going to reconnect, and we're going to find out why they broke up, and it's going to be a very touching, a very interesting story, and it's going to be something where we understand why she broke up with him, and that he never quite got over it. Like, some people, like, he really hasn't actually gotten over it, and that's something that hasn't really been reconciled with, is Jane Foster, which, you know, I'm glad, which is one of those things where... When you heard that Natalie Portman was coming on board, initially I was like, wow, I can't believe... One, I was like, I can't believe they got her to come back because her experience last time, she was really not down for it, which I don't completely blame her. Being the helpless love interest is not the most glamorous role for an actress, especially an actress of her caliber. I mean, Natalie Portman's an Oscar nominated. I think maybe Oscar... She's either an Oscar nominated or an Oscar winning actress. That's a woman who leads roles. So if you're going to put her in a movie to just be the damsel, it, I, I can see why she would want more out of it, especially since minor, especially since minor little, you know, tidbit, 
Thor The Dark World wasn't supposed to be like that. Patty Jenkins, yes, that Patty Jenkins, the Wonder Woman director, was supposed to direct it, and it was going to be a lot more... It wasn't going to be like that. Um, she, um, Natalie Portman's, Jane was going to have more to do. It was like she's going to be the lead. Thor is still going to be the lead character, but Jane was going to have more to do, and Hela was going to be the villain of Thor The Dark World. Which makes, which makes you just think, like, what the fuck would have happened in Ragnarok? So, yeah, Hela was going to be the villain, Jane was going to have more to do, and Thor was going to be a lead. It was going to be a very, a very different movie. But Ike Perlbutter kind of got in the way of that, because Ike, Ike's Ike. He didn't think a female villain could actually be successful in the film. But, all right, whatever. Hela ended up coming out, Kate Blanchett killed it, whatever. But, yeah, so I didn't think she would come back at all. But on top of that, I was like, man, it kind of felt like something that they were going to just ignore. But I should have known that the MCU is really good at trying not to leave any stone unturned, trying to call back to stuff, trying to bring stuff back if they can, trying to wrap up loose ends if they can. They don't even need to. But bringing Jane Foster back is going to really be closure. And, like, I'm hoping that because, hmm, this, the movie's either going to end two ways. It's either going to end with Jane and Thor, you know, embracing and love again. Both, you know, super-powered beings, both with their hammers. And, you know, they're going to just, like, I don't know, go off and just be together and make up their mind if they want to come out and save people or not. And, you know, go off together and, and whatnot. Or one of them's going to die. I don't think and one of them's going to die, which could be Jane. In the comics, eventually, when Jane does relinquish the hammer, it's a very touching scene where she's, like, holding on, when her and Thor are embracing, and she kisses him one last time before she passes. Like, it's a very, it's in the comics, it's a very emotional um, page. It's really well done. So, I'm like, I can visually see that happening. I can visually see her giving her life. And, like, doing the brave thing, saving the day, and dying from the cancer, and being embraced by Thor, which would be a very emotional thing. But I digress. We're here to talk about how that hammer got reforged. Now, there's so many things, so many people out there talking about it. So many people out there who think, who think that, who think it might be the ether. They think she might have got her cancer from the ether. Which would make sense if she got her cancer from the ether. But so many people are coming up with very elaborate ways to how that hammer reforged. And I think it's going to be pretty simple. If you paid attention in the trailer, you would have noticed that New Asgard is a tourist attraction now. I mean, New Asgard's like Norway, Vegas, basically. It's like Vegas in Norway. Because <laughs> um, they got all these things. They got all these um, alien technology and stuff. And, they got, and like, they're really out here trying to you know, boost up the money revenue in Asgard. Valkyrie's trying to you know, do something to shake things up. If you notice, there is a sign. There is a sign and a bus with the Thor hammer on the side of it. And I think, well, like somebody else has pointed out too, that... They have built a nice little, like, area around the fragments of Thor's hammer Mjolnir. Remember, the enchantment still functions on Mjolnir, which means the pieces that were broken can't be moved from that spot, which means there's nothing... That, like, it's not like they cleaned it up and threw it in the trash. You can't move the pieces of Mjolnir. So they're still on that hill where, you know, Odin disappeared and Thor and, you know, Loki got into it with um, Hela. It, the hammer is still there. So what probably happened is Valkyrie, being a smart, you know, entrepreneur that she is, decided to build something around the Thor hammer and, like, build, like, be this nice location where people can go and attempt to pick it up and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. And, you know, you pay to go see it and stuff. It's probably something along those lines. And for one reason or another... Jane Foster will be visiting. Maybe she wants to see Thor. Maybe she wants to ask Thor for help. Or maybe she just, like, wants to see him and she thinks that he's here and she wants to see him. She's sick. Maybe she's been sick for a while. It depends on the angle they want to play it up. How long has she been sick? Did she just get the announcement? I wouldn't be surprised if it's one of those things where they're going to go with, um... At the top of the movie, she hears that she's sick and then slowly and then, like... And then is going to kind of... Over the course of the movie, she's going to get sicker. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if she got blipped. If she hears the news that she got sick, gets blipped away, which kind of preserves her a bit because she did, she wasn't around, and then she comes back. I, I would not be surprised about that. But I think it's going to be something as simple as Jane's going to attempt to pick up the hammer, and it's not going to work. And something, she's going to do something brave. She's going to try to help someone. Something. She's going to do something courageous, something brave, something that shows that she's worthy of the hammer, and the pieces of the hammer are going to fly to her, and she's gonna get the armor and it's gonna be badass i think that scene that we see with thor seeing her is the first time thor is gonna see her 
with the helmet and, and the hammer. But we would have seen her already get the hammer and the helmet and everything and fuck up all these people. And I am also curious, because someone else pointed this pointed this idea out, that maybe that in the comics, she has this whole helmet over her face. So you can't really tell who she is. Her hair is a different color. She And, and in the comics, she speaks differently. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to play that up, but in the comics, she kind of speaks with that... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? That Shakespearean vows and shit. I don't know if they're going to make her do that. But, um, I can't remember if she if they made her talk that way or if she talked that way just to hide in disguise. But I'm not sure. I'm curious if they're going to play that angle. If they're going to play up the whole disguise angle with her. That no one knows who she really is. Because I do also think what's going to happen is Valkyrie and Thor are going to both fall for her. And it's going to be a weird, weird love triangle between her, Valkyrie, and Thor. Where Valkyrie and Thor are trying to fight for her affections. But I digress. That's how I think she's going to get the hammer. I think it's more simple than people think it is. I think she's going to, for some reason or another, Jane, either the visit Thor or something, is going to be in Norway, New Asgard, is going to be in New Asgard, and she's going to go on this trip, she, the hammer's going to be there, the attack is going to happen, like, Gore and his people are going to come there and attack at that moment, and she's going to, and she's going to do something really brave, and the hammer is going to come to her. She's going to be the first person to show that she's, um... The first person to actually visit to show that she's worthy enough to hold it is going to come to her. It's going to be a badass sequence. We're going to see. I hope they do the... Ch I don't think they're going to do it again. One of my favorite Thor sequences, by the way. Something they haven't done in a long time and I don't think they'll ever do again. It's in the first Thor. The chainmail piece. The piece where the pieces kind of like link back up. Like, I loved it. When he got his armor back and it kind of went... It was so awesome. They never did it again, but it was so awesome. It's kind of like the Iron Man suit, suit um, Iron Man suiting up. They stopped showing him suit up, but, you know, and even the, uh, even Spider-Man with his um, the nano spider suit, they really don't they don't show him, like, like the first... It, it never got any better than the first time he had the Iron Spider suit. We saw just come across the whole body it never got any better than that but you know i digress I, I'm, I'm excited for this i know some people are really upset by the way i don't want to go on a tangent here but some people are really upset about the jane foster thing you know tyron maxis <laughs> but like you know but like there are some people who are just upset some people are angry that she's in this i mean seth told me some guy was angry that it wasn't beta ray bill and like, there's all kinds of things people think they're replacing thor i don't think they're replacing thor i think what's gonna happen is best worst case scenario thor is thor is thor is gonna just go off with um with her i do think they're gonna reconnect though i do think they're gonna reconnect i mean there is a chance that thor just kind of goes off and continues to go off and do his own thing and um, Jane stays on Earth as Thor, like, you know, Thor on Earth. Kind of like a Green Lantern thing. There's like three, four Green Lanterns. We can have two Thors. Calm down. You know? <laughs> Anywho, that's my thoughts. That is how I think Jane Foster is going to get the hammer. That is what I, the angle I think they're playing with her. I can't wait to see this movie. I can't wait to see the official trailer, which got to be coming out not too long from now either because, like, there's only a month or two <laughs> before, the before the movie comes out. I think it's like a month away. Like, the movie comes out, what, July or something? I can't remember. What was it, July? Either way, the movie comes out very soon. I am excited for it. Cannot wait. Anyways, thank you guys for joining the Comic Game Movie Show. Please do like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.